you know, after they had consolidated stuff, mm -hmm. then, then what would happen? Well, they would remove everything that was possible for them to remove from the buildings, the glove boxes, the equipment. They put it in big crates and boxes. Some of it went to uh, metal, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, oh, where they re furbish stuff. Mm -hmm. What do you call that? What's the term? Recycle. There it is. I knew I'd pull it out. <laughs> it just took a while. Uh, recycling stuff. Uh, when they got a building, they like building, for instance, building 371 had a lot of tanks in there. They had to empty these tanks out. Then they would cut the tanks up and uh, Put them in crates and. This is Daniel. He works in my office. Hi, Daniel. He understands computers. He knows how to turn one of them on. Oh. <laughs> so him and Jerry are geniuses. I'm Judy Daniel. Hi, nice Steve to meet you. I worked out at Rocky Flats for oh, okay. 22 years. Oh. And um. Yeah, we've got an interview going on for taping. So. Yeah, I I was there um, during the decommissioning and the decontamination and I worked with my job as an RCT or a radiological uh, monitor it was called radiological control monitor or control technician for the T. They always called us monitors as a nickname. We monitored the air filters and the vents and people's hands and people when they went into a process area or came out of a process area. We had um, big uh, machines that you would like step into and they would monitor your feet and your hands. And then if there was any contamination, then a person would go over you with the instrument, go over your clothing and see if there was hot spots on your person. But um, oh, where was I going? Mm. Judy, you were talking before about uh, imploding. The oh, imploding building. building. I, 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 I yeah, now the buildings, what. what they did with that is rather than explode where it would go out and the airborne contaminants would get into the air, they would implode a building so that it would like crush in upon itself and it would contain all the contamination. They did this to several buildings. They also did it to the um, one of the big stacks that they had out there, the burning, uh, what you call chimney, like they imploded that. They, they wanted to keep the dust down. After they dismantled a building, they'd be out there with big water hoses, you know, watering, watering the dust down to keep it down. But uh, a lot of that was done. Those guys driving the bulldozers or the or the uh, cranes, they didn't have a dust mask on or nothing. And to me, that was so foolish. I wore my mask. Oh, I was know what I was going to say. I because I had gone through a sheet metal apprenticeship and I was a sheet metal technician. I mostly worked with maintenance guys, the guys who were the pipe fitters who were the sheet metal guys, who were the electricians. The electricians liked me the best. They always wanted me to go with them because, I don't know why, but they did. Uh, so I worked a lot with electricians. I liked working with the, um, the maintenance guys because I had worked with them before. I knew the terminology. I knew what they were talking about when they said a, a valve or a, you know, junction box, I knew what they meant. And so I, they, I was a help to them and so they liked me for their job. So they always put me with maintenance. And so I saw the glove boxes being dismantled. I knew how a glove box was built. So I knew how it would be dismantled. The same thing with the electrical boxes. I didn't know everything about it, but I knew enough that I knew when to get out of the way. <laughs> but. Um, I worked with the maintenance men. So 
um, as it was being dismantled, I saw a lot. I worked in areas that were where they had the um, hydrofluoric acids. Th that stuff is really scary and spooky and does ugly things to your body. If it gets into you, it hurts more coming out than it does going in. But um, um, my job out at Rocky Flats, I have to say, I liked my work. I liked what I was doing. I enjoyed going to work every day. It wasn't so scary to me. I didn't love wearing all that equipment because it was hot. It was uncomfortable. But I felt like I was doing great thing, that my government supported what I did. I was a necessary, but as time has gone by and I have seen how my government has treated the people who worked so hard for the freedom of America, I have become very disillusioned. And I, I feel that what I did as a nuclear worker was no less than what the soldiers who go over to Iran and risk their lives are doing. And I feel I want respect for what I did. And not only do I want a sign out there protecting people who might go onto the property, I want a sign out there as a testimonial to the people who worked out there and died for what they were doing. You know, I, I feel very strongly about it. And two years ago, in 2007, when our president was running for office, we had a meeting at a hotel with the board of directors from the EEOICPA. And Barack Obama came on the, the uh, PA system and said, that he promised he would help the nuclear workers. He understood what nuclear workers went through and he would be on our side. But so far, nothing has come of that, not even changed at all. And I would like to see that rectified. I would like to see all the nuclear workers in the United States who worked with these hazardous, deadly materials, I would like to see them get their at least get their health care, if nothing else, because they have sacrificed enough. What's your um, feeling about the cleanup? The cleanup, I feel the cleanup was rushed. They did it in too big of a hurry. They didn't take enough safety measures, especially for the workers who worked out there. They did it in a hurry because there was a big, big money bonus if they finished early. So they sidestepped a lot of the safety issues. They put workers and people at risk. I feel like they didn't do as thorough a job as they could have done. I feel like they've, they're still residual plutonium, americium, polonium, other elements out there. If you took an instrument out there today, you could find count out there. I do not feel that is a safe place for people to go taking hikes and taking their kids, letting their kids dig in the dirt. No, I do not feel it's safe. That's my opinion. I'm no scientist, but I wouldn't do it. I feel sorry for the people who live close by I feel like for years, Rocky Flats gave off effluvium, <laughs> so to speak, of the dangerous, harmful product. 